Hello, all. We just got word of a new study focused on a new way to search for alien life in our Milky Way galaxy. The focus involves what these scientists called patterns of energy. So what does that mean? We're going to talk about that. My guest today is physicist Michael Tikhanov at Washington University in St. Louis. Michael, hello. Hello, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so glad you're here. So your new study was published in late March in the journal Nature Communications. And we have that link in the post description. So why do we need a new way to search for alien life? Uh, yeah, so for me, the fascinating part of the question is just to recognize that life elsewhere in the universe doesn't have to be anything like, like, like life on our Earth. Uh, so there's this fascinating question, if life could be totally different, what should we look for? Um, okay, and so what you mean by that is maybe it's not based on carbon, it might be based on something else, is that what you mean? Exactly, so like, you know, it could be anything, and therefore, how do we look for it? <laughs> right, so earthly life is based on carbon because carbon molecules are really good at connecting up with other molecules, but another uh, molecule that people often mention that's also good at connecting up is silicon. So there could be silicon-based life. Yeah, and I mean, there are many reasons and many good reasons that people know why life elsewhere could in fact look, look much more like, like, uh, like life on Earth. Uh, but I think it's fun also just to imagine the possibilities and like, how do you imagine the unimaginable or that's kind of the role of theory. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of why it's a fun uh, question to think about. And we're not talking here about SETI, right? The search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We're, we're not talking about looking for intelligent radio signals or intelligent civilizations. You're mainly speaking about the kind of life that astronomers nowadays are very focused on finding and that's possibly microbial life. Yeah, yeah. So intelligence is a very strong requirement. Uh, so if we get a radio signal that, you know, clearly encodes a message from uh, intelligent beings, then great. Um, but what if it isn't obvious or familiar, right? Like what, uh, how would we recognize it? If that for me is kind of the intriguing part here. Like if we stumble on life, would we recognize it as life? Uh, right. So, yeah. Okay. So we're not talking about the search for biosignatures, which just last week we talked with uh, Dr. Phil Plate about uh, a discovery of a possible biosignature on a planet, you know, hundreds of light years away. And that's a big thing that astronomers do nowadays is they're using the Webb Space Telescope to look for biosignatures in other worlds. So tell us what a biosignature is and how your proposal is different from that. Yeah, yeah, so it's still in the context of kind of search for biosignatures. The key distinction um, is that people talk either about just biosignatures or what's called agnostic biosignatures. So most practical examples are uh, looking, or the first kind, they're looking for some specific compounds. So, you know, life doesn't have to be based on oxygen, but uh, that's something we can look for remotely. And if there is kind of an abundance of oxygen in the atmosphere of some distant planet, then that's strong evidence, uh, would be strongly suggestive of life. Um, what I'm talking about is in this class of agnostic biosignatures, which is, you know, how would you recognize life just because it's life with minimal extra assumptions? Uh, and that is a hard kind of conceptual question. Like, even if you take away all practical limitations of our instruments, right? If you could do anything, it's still not obvious, uh, you know, it's even answerable. There are very few candidates. Um, so this must be the time actually to emphasize that uh, our paper is not a practical suggestion. It's a conceptual idea, uh, but the question is hard enough that that you know people still thought that was interesting. Um, yeah, so our idea was that one thing that we might expect um, life to generically have is to form a competing ecosystem. 
so that no you know alien amoeba would ever be crawling out there on its own. Uh, and then we argue that a competitive ecology would generically leave a pattern in how it consumes resources based on their energy content. But we're still talking about atmospheres of planets, correct? Or, or are we talking about even down on the surfaces of planets? Yeah, so actually probably not atmospheres. On Earth, we see these patterns in water columns, uh, like in lakes and oceans, and also in soil. Uh, and that definitely gets into this question of practicality of the de detection. Uh, but yeah. So what is it that you're seeing exactly? So you call it a, a transfer of energy and you gave the example of like in the sense that high energy compounds like glucose convert into low energy compounds like carbon dioxide. So, so what is it that you're, as, you know, say more about that. Like what is, what is that yeah. about? Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, so the idea is pretty simple actually. So, you know, life runs some chemistry but chemistry, chemical reactions also happen uh, on their own. And so what's kind of a difference? And one thing that generically makes life different is that life cares about how much energy it can extract from a reaction. So a kind of juicier, you know, higher energy compound would in general be consumed first simply because whoever is eating it can replicate more and therefore consume it faster. Right. So on Earth, when this happens, uh, let's say in a water column, you see um, like oxygen, the juiciest, uh, you know, highest energy oxidant be depleted first at the surface, then nitrate, then sulfate. So the availability of these compounds forms layers that are ordered uh, by what's called uh, their redox potential. So and I should emphasize, so layered structures in general are very common. Uh, but only life cares about energy in this way. And so our argument is that, you know, if we brought a rock back from Mars and we saw that in that rock compounds were ordered by their energy content, we would say that's strong evidence that life was involved somehow. That's kind of uh, the argument. So would you need to bring something back in order to see this? Or is this something that, I mean, do or how can we find out if, if, I mean, this is obviously happening, if life exists in other parts of the galaxy, this should be happening, right? There should be this layering going on and there should be this energy transfer going on, but how, how can we see that? Yes, so that's, <laughs> you're kind of hitting the nail on the head that, you know, again, oh. all we're proposing <laughs> is this idea of integrating ecology into the discussion and whether or how this could ever have a practical implementation, that is a question for the experts of which you have interviewed many on this channel. And I should emphasize that I'm not that, as you've said, I'm a physicist who also thinks about microbial ecology. And so this idea, we talked to a few experts who found that kind of intriguing, whether it can become practical, that is for people who actually, you know, it's cool to think about that these days there are what's called sample return missions. They're usually not, so, you know, they actually landed spacecrafts on, you know, a comet or an asteroid and like brought back some samples, which is crazy to me. Uh, but, you know, maybe it's not entirely science fiction. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like my mind immediately goes to, well, let's take some of the moon rocks and let's take some of the samples that we have from, you know, asteroid Bennu, for example, and 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 look at them and analyze them in this way. They've never been analyzed in this way, right? Um, not in this way specifically. I mean, yeah, no, it's 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 interesting. I mean, I'm sure that if people had noticed a layered structure, I mean, a lot of the this would have caught somebody's attention. So I suspect that that pattern isn't there. Um, but if we sort of Think of that as an example of something we could look for, or maybe even like beyond this specific argument for layering, just the idea of what else is a minimal assumption about life. Like we know that life has to involve self-replication, but just that doesn't leave anything measurable. 
So what else that feels like a minimal assumption? If I don't want to assume something like, oh, it's oxygen or, oh, it's, you know, uh, dimethyl sulfide as, uh, you know, this a recent result. Um, what is a minimal assumption? And maybe the fact that life forms ecology is a possible candidate. That's kind of all we're contributing. Okay. So please confirm for me at this moment on april 28th 2025 the only life we know is on earth correct <laughs> as far as i know yes i believe so right okay and so so what's your personal feeling about it i mean i'm 74 i've been doing this work for 50 years and i've been expecting the discovery of extraterrestrial life that whole time <laughs> that whole 50 years I've been waiting, but so far no life. Do you think we'll find life on another planet in your lifetime? Ah, uh, great question. Um, honestly, probably not. I'm, I guess, skeptical, <laughs> but you know, okay. If you asked me five years ago, whether I'd have an artificial intelligence assistant writing for me computer code at a level of a pretty com competent graduate student, I would tell you this is absolutely bonkers crazy and we're nowhere close to that. So, you know, never say never. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, Michael, fascinating. Thank you so much. Thank you so much um, I've been speaking, me. yes, thank you. I've been speaking with physicist Michael Tikhanov at Washington University. He studies communities of microbes, and hopefully someday on other worlds we'll find something like that. Uh, if you enjoy hearing straight from scientists about their research, please subscribe, like, or share. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky. Thank you, Deborah.